All right. We are reacting to stuff. Uh, this particular one is every country England has invaded. Now, we're going into this. I know a few things. One, what's being invaded is all a little subjective by what you consider be an uh, invasion is. I mean, ten people hopping over the border to try to subvert the government. Let's say um, Germany into Russia. Some people would say that's invasion. Some people say that's not. It depends on what you see an invasion are. So, I'm going to be a little... Yeah. About any numbers they throw out there or reasons they considered a country invaded. Maybe. Second, Britain went through a phase where they were an empire and they were colonizing everywhere and claiming land everywhere. Sometimes lands that weren't a country by definition. And France was doing the same thing at the time. So was Spain, uh, a lot of those Western countries. Um, and the idea was, the longer you reach, the more resources you can pull in. Resources are important because you either use them to build or trade. And that's how you thrive as a country and keep going. Um, so British had a stint where they did that. And I believe they held a lot of their colonies well into and a little bit after World War II. In fact, Beijing was considered British until a few years ago. You know, I think the last decade, decade and a half, it changed back over into uh, native control, but it was considered British, I believe, and had a separate government from China. So, under that understanding too, I'm not gonna be too surprised at how widespread British invasion would be. So, without further ado, now that I qualified the entire video without seeing it, let's watch it. A good chunk of the past few centuries, this music was the final boss music played for people across the entire world. The English, and later the British, have been responsible for invading and conquering more countries and people than any other nation in human history. And honestly, Strange it's startling just how many places they've been to. In this video, I'm going to do my best at attempting to visualize all of Britain's invasions and conquests for you, continent by continent, in as brief a time as possible. So let's begin with the closest continent to Britain, Europe. Ireland was the first target of British conquests and was invaded as early as 1169. Within 400 years of gradual conquests, the entire island was ruled by the British and remained that way until most of it was granted independence in 1921. Historically, France has probably been invaded by the English more times than any other country in the world. Okay, so the whole Ireland thing, starting that early, I don't think... England was a full country when they're saying they started going in after Ireland. I think it was several little city-states in England that might have band together, but I don't think they were known as England when they are going in. As for the Fr French, yeah, those two next-door neighbors, just the sound, they've been warring forever matter of fact uh 
most time it is either marrying or fighting the French for the English way back from my think the beginning of England as a country. Just take a look at this huge list of invasions. There's not even enough time to talk about a third of these. And for a time, all of this territory inside mm -hmm. of modern France yeah. was directly controlled by the English, with Calais being the final piece that fell in 1557. Well, except for that time when the British took over Corsica for a couple years. The yeah, British right. continue to invade Spain by the millions every winter. Yeah, but in the same past, story. they've come with a lot less friendly intentions. English and later British soldiers soldiers invaded under the Black Prince in 1367 and continued on through the first, second, third, and fourth raids on Cadiz and that time when the British took over Gibraltar and Menorca. They gave Menorca back but decided on keeping Gibraltar forever. In recent history... Yeah, Gibraltar though, that's important. That's a major importance. War and in peace because it controls that entry into the Mediterranean the British have invaded Belgium in order to support the Belgians. But that wasn't always the case. They conducted two pretty large-scale invasions of modern-day Belgium in 1654 and again in 1701. And or Flanders Spanish itself session. was ruled by the English for a few years in the 14th century. The Netherlands was one of England's historical arch-rivals, and so there's been plenty of invasions going in this direction across the 17th and 18th centuries. In 1940... Okay. That's because they were getting raided the other direction <laughs> in the first place before England was really seafaring. They were suffering raids from indigenous people from the Netherlands. So the British technically invaded and took over Iceland peacefully for a year in order to prevent it from falling into the hands of the Germans. But this was huh. heavily protested by the Icelandic government at the time. So in my books, it still counts as an invasion. Italy. See, right there. That's what I'm talking about. That really isn't an invasion. He considers it an invasion in post-retrospect. And it might be him in a select group, for all I know. So, eh. I'm, I'm sure there's a few of these in there that are that subjective. He, of course, was invaded by the British Army during the Second World War as well in 1943. Right. But there were plenty of invasions before then, dating back to Richard the Lionheart's invasion in 1190. Germany, right. too, was obviously huh. invaded by the British Army in 1945, and right. northwestern Germany was occupied by the British for three years until 1948. But a lot of German territory was ruled by Britain long before then. The islands of Heligoland were British for most of the 19th century, hmm. and the Kingdom of Hanover was effectively ruled under a personal union for over a century between 1714 okay before we even get down into there i also know the crusades are gonna pop up a real i don't know if you call it religious invasion but king of england and other european country king of other european countries said hey christians we need the christian homeland so go take it and they went back and forth so many times and just sat in there fighting. Eh. And 1837. Austria was also invaded in 1945, and the southwest of the country was occupied for a decade. Norway was invaded in 1810 and 1812 during the Napoleonic Wars when it was a part of Denmark Norway because Denmark was aligned to France, so obviously right. Denmark was invaded during that time as well. Okay. Finland, Estonia, and Latvia were all briefly invaded by small units during the Crimean War against Russia because they were all part of the Russian Empire at the time, and of course, Russia itself was invaded then too, as well as in 1918 when the British took over a large chunk of northern Russia for a time in their fight against the Bolsheviks. The territory <laughs> of modern Ukraine was invaded by British army units during the Crimean War. The British took over the Croatian island of Vis between 1807 and 1814 during their fight against Napoleon. The British army had boots and guns on the ground in Bosnia recently between 1992 and 95 fighting against the Bosnian Serbs. Okay, I don't know if that's considered an invasion. Because... That wasn't just British going, huh? That was part of NATO. So, I don't know. 
And around the same time, the RAF also carried out bombing strikes against Serbian Serb targets in Serbia in 1999. Montenegro was briefly blockaded and invaded in 1913 during the First Balkan War. The British owned the westernmost Ionian islands of Greece between 1815 and 1863 before they gave them back, while Bulgaria was invaded and almost entirely occupied by the British Army between 1918 and 1919 at the end of World War I. Cyprus right. was a British protectorate between 1878 and 1915. 14, when they decided to just outright annex it to piss off the Turks, and it remained right, annexed until 1960, except for two one. small chunks that are still British today. Turkey itself was massively invaded by the British during World War I, and part of it was occupied between 1919 and 1923. That wraps up Europe, so let's move on to Asia now. Alright. Once again, I'm not sure actions in World War I actually count because they invaded it as part of an allied force of just not Britain. You know? Um, and same thing with World War II. Um, there's a lot in um, the 20th century that British was not acting alone. They are acting as an allied force because of a world war or as part of NATO. So I don't know if that's considered an invasion because they weren't the only ones. You can consider it an allied invasion in World War II and World War One. Um... But, like, Korea, if they bring that up, the British were in Korea for the Korean War. Not at the same level the U.S. was, but it was a NATO or an allied invasion. So on and so forth. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Need Next, modern day. Today, Israel and Palestine, right. as well as Jordan, were British controlled from the end of World War I to 1948 and 1946, respectively. Lebanon and Syria were both occupied from the Vichy French government briefly during World War II. Iraq was ruled between 1919 and 1932 and invaded again during the Second World War and again in 1991 and again in 2003. See? World War II. I don't know if that counts because that was allied. That wasn't just the British. 91 and 03, that was part of NATO that they were rolling in. And when I say NATO, I do am aware that I'm, I'm implicating um, them writing coattails on other countries. But still, come on now. Kuwait was a colony for over 60 years until 1966. Georgia and Azerbaijan were both invaded and occupied right at the end of World War I for a year. Iran has been invaded at least three times, with the most notable example being the joint Anglo-Soviet invasion of 1941. Turkmenistan was invaded in 1918 to prevent Bolshevik influence from spreading any further. Afghanistan is a favorite British invasion spot since it's been invaded in 1839, 1878, 1919, and again in 2001. Cutter, See, 2001, once again, they're, 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 they're rolling in with, in NATO. They aren't the only ones rolling in. So is it a British invasion? Yes. You could very feasibly argue that it's an invasion. But is it a British invasion? The United Arab Emirates and Oman were all controlled by the British until the early 1970s, while a chunk of Yemen was controlled for over a century between 1839 and 1967. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka were all, of course, invaded many times and outright ruled by the British Empire in parts for nearly two centuries That's part between of, uh, 1757 British Empire and 1947. Nepal was invaded in 1814 but never successfully conquered. Bhutan was invaded in 1772 and again in 1863. 
1944 and was sort of conquered as a protectorate between 1910 and 1948. Burma slash Myanmar was invaded in 1826 and was definitely successfully conquered and ruled through 1947. Now, I believe they are pulling butt tons of spice and spices out of that East India Trading Company. You know, all part of that. Um, most people only recognize that from Pirates of the Caribbean, but eh, it was a thing. And uh, it did run a lot of war policy in that area. So... Thailand was briefly invaded in 1945 since they were allied to Japan in World War II, and so was Vietnam in the same year, but that was to support the French government against the growing independence movement. Malaysia and Singapore were each conquered and ruled up until the 1950s and 1960s. Brunei was conquered and ruled up until the 1980s, whereas the Philippines were briefly invaded during the Seven Years' War. China got invaded a lot, and Hong Kong was a colony until as recently as 1997. Yeah, and while see, not outright go. invaded, part of Japan was occupied following World War II between 1946. See, I don't know if that's considered an invasion. Because Japan properly surrendered and the World Initiative put people there to keep, you know, as part of the peace treaty. So, I don't know how or why. Um... Mainland Japan never saw an actual standing army during World War II invade their homeland. So, it seems like some of these mm, kind of push in the definition of invasion a little. Not defending Britain. Because yeah, Britain does have a history of being very blatant about... We're here. It's mine. Shove off. But and 1952. And finally, Indonesia was invaded a bunch during the Napoleonic Wars since it was a Dutch colony allied to France at the time. Next up, Oceania. Australia and New Zealand, of course, were invaded by the British and established as colonies that each gained independence in 1931. Papua New Guinea was also a British colony for a time. Also, he makes it sound dramatic. Some of these invasions are not based on like this country we're invading it's we're invading this country because another country is already invaded it and we're kicking them out kind of thing some of these invasions fall under that you know they aren't invading the country and invading those people. They're invading that country to outs the people that just previously invaded it. So. As were the island countries of Fiji, Kiribati, the Solomon Islands, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. Let's move back over to Africa next, which Ooh, the British Africa's have violently one. visited a lot. In terms of just places the British outright colonized after invasions, there's the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Ghana, Nigeria, Egypt, Sudan, South Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, Malawi, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, and South Africa, along with parts of modern-day Somalia and Guinea. Senegal was briefly invaded at now, a lot of those run around the coast because they had to go around the Horn before uh, the Suez Canal was established. So they had to go around the Horn to get over to uh, India. And they wanted ports along the way. One reason they colonized. Some of these countries were invaded before they were even really a country. And after... A colony was there. They said, okay, we need a port here. We'll put in a colony. And, oh, since we're here, we'll just take all this land for resource. Matter of fact, I do believe. And, by the way, in comments, correct me. Because I'm not talking as an expert at all. I do believe some of these countries were established. And their borders were established. Because of British rule. So they were, there were additional people there, but those people weren't a country, weren't formed under a country 
British came in, set out the land, made borders, and then they were a country. Um, best example, and I'm sure we'll get to this in a bit, America. America just had Indians, and Indians had territories, but they didn't have borders. And they were very fluid. British came in, they set up colonies, and those colonies sectioned out different lands. Then they rebelled and became a country. The U.S. as a country and their borders didn't exist. And the colonies that rebelled and the land that they claimed as their borders, those borders didn't exist until the British colonies were there. They said what they were, and those borders determined the country later. I'm pretty sure some of these fall under that purview. So, some of these countries that we're seeing invaded, there might have been just a section that was invaded, and then later on when it was a country determine the borders and he's just wiping the whole land area of that country in for being invaded. So, and some of them weren't a country until that invasion happened, I'm sure. So, moving on. Some of their coastline taken over in the 1700s. While during the Second World War, the British invaded the French colonies of Djibouti, Madagascar, and Comoros after they aligned themselves with the Nazi Vichy regime and the Italian colonies of Libya, Eritrea, and Ethiopia, although they had also invaded Ethiopia much earlier in 1868. And as mm. German colonies right before World War I, the British also invaded Togo and Cameroon without annexing them afterwards. For the final area of the world left to discuss, let's move over to the Americas. All of Canada was a British colony until 1931, while Newfoundland remained until... Okay. See, kind of going to argue that. The Hudson Bay was. And honestly, America back then didn't own Alaska. So technically, as a landmass... That should have included Alaska, if he's going to say it that way. Now, before then, they didn't even know there was country that far west. They really didn't. The Hudson Bay, they knew. There were some trappers that might have gone a little bit of a ways out there, but come on now. 1610? No, no. They didn't even know that country is there when they colonized the Hudson Bay. And they colonized the Hudson Bay for trade and furs. It's the same thing with the East Coast of the U.S. It just, they didn't know the Rocky Mountains existed way over there. So I guarantee you when he says, yes, the U.S., he's going to read out the entirety of the U.S. So... 1949. The United States, of course, was a colony until 1770. See? No. If you're going to do that there, then you can't do it. Because I'm pretty sure that northern border of the United States didn't exist in 1620. For Canada. Six. And, was and what's with the Oregon-Washington thing? What, was that considered part of the Canada colony? I don't know. And hmm. was invaded again in 1812, and the modern states of Oregon and Washington were claimed right up until 1846. As far as other outright British colonies here... Okay. Now I see why. 1819. By then, there was a push west. So that land was known by 1819. But those were considered territories and 1846? I don't know. I don't know why they claimed them. They weren't getting anything out of them, I don't think. 
Hmm. Though there was the Bahamas, Jamaica, Belize, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, St. Lucia, Dominica, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Trinidad what? and Tobago, and Guyana. Besides colonies, Cuba was invaded and occupied during the Seven Years' War in 1762. Haiti was invaded in 1793 during the French Revolutionary Wars. The Dominican Republic was invaded way back in 1655 in an oh. attempt at conquest under Oliver Cromwell. Parts of the east coast of Honduras and Nicaragua were conquered and ruled for nearly two centuries until 1819. They sent the Navy to invade Mexico in 1861 to force them to repay some debts, and during the splendidly named War of Jenkins Ear, aka the more lame sounding okay see he's he got too far in the territory they sent the british navy that that means they didn't actually put boots on and invaded mexico and you notice he didn't read that out but you know, he is kind of making it sound a little bit more dramatic that way. War of the Austrian Succession, the British invaded a lot of Spain's colonies, including Panama, a huge one into Colombia, and ultimately Peru. In 1796, the British took over Suriname because it was a Dutch colony, and they were allied with a revolutionary French and later Napoleon. They also invaded Martinique and Guadeloupe because they actually were French during the Napoleonic Wars. Venezuela was invaded in 1902 as part of the so-called Venezuela Crisis, to force the country to repay some debts they had defaulted on, kind of like Mexico, while Argentina and Uruguay were both invaded during the Napoleonic Wars as well in 1806 when Spain and her colonies were still allied with Napoleon. And that's pretty much- Okay, why did you not throw reds up like you so meticulously did <laughs> in these other countries? sums up all of the territory the British have ever ruled and all of the countries the small island has ever invaded. There are a total of 65 countries today. Okay, so now he qualified it. That they have ever ruled and or invaded. So, ever ruled, I mean, that makes that really, really a fluid thing. I mean... Sometimes uh, communication wasn't so good because communication had, had to go by letter across the world by boat or caravan. So British would receive a letter. Oh, yeah, this area is ours. And it was there for, for two days. And then things went south, I'm sure. Who celebrates their Independence Days from the British Empire. The empire used to rule over a quarter of all the world's land at the same time and was the biggest empire in human history. And in total, today, there have been 117 modern countries that have been aggressively invaded by the British armed forces during some point in their histories, representing a total of 60% of all the world's nations, which is almost the same number of countries that you can watch this video in. YouTube is available in 130 countries now, or about two thirds of them but the algorithm that youtube uses won't always work the way you all right so let's uh get a little talky talk about this in review a little loose on the definition of invade did qualify it later as and or ruled um yeah and I think there are a few of those that can be taken off the list because they were acting in tandem with a larger multi-country force. You know? Um, that, that That's being invaded, not being invaded by the British, per se. I, I think that can chip off a little. And... Invading is a lot different than ruling. I mean, not not all people end up ruling by war. A larger sum of people or countries do, but not all countries are being ruled because they were invaded. Not all. Some agree that they want to be under the umbrella of a different country. And they want to be under that those rules or that protection or they want to provide protection that does happen not as frequently as countries used to rule or invade so 
Um, here's the thing. Him also qualifying it for countries and not landmass kind of uh, makes it larger and qualifies it. Because I believe the Mongolian Empire landmass wise dwarfed. And when and a lot of their country, they actually had people put on. I mean, if you look at the landmass up into uh, the north, there's land up there that they were claiming that nobody had even seen. They were just guessing that land was out there. I mean, up into uh, North Pole area. They were just claiming it and ruling over land that nobody's ever been or ever will be or have or has been for a long time. I mean, are you really ruling it? I don't know. Now, the British, yes, there are points where they were really aggressive. They wanted the Cheddar. They wanted the resources. They went out and got them. And they said, screw you to everybody. And because of that, as an island, essentially, and not even that big of an island, I mean, yeah, they actually put foots on and became very powerful. I mean, it's like taking a bunch of um, water spigots and pointing it at one point, and the power of the water is much greater at that point. And that's what England was. It was taking in all those colonies, filtering it through England, and England became really powerful because of it. Powerful enough where they're in constant, constant strife with neighboring countries, Spain, France, so on, and all. So, uh, guys, remember to do the whole like, subscribe, alert, stole bit. But even more importantly, put something in the comments. Give me suggestions of things to react to. I like watching things. It fills my time. I like talking about them because, I don't know, talking is talking. <laughs> I learn things. I don't learn to be right all the time, though. So I do know that um, I might have gotten some things wrong. I tried to qualify myself. And I know I'm not an expert. So if you got any corrections for me, put those in the comments too. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. And uh, thanks for stopping by.